from the American Heart Association meeting. I keep hearing people talk about the fact that maybe the guidelines will need to be updated once again on managing lipids. Partly it's because of some of the material that has been presented here, including uh, a particular paper on the safety and tolerability of very low LDL cholesterol uh, levels in patients treated with 52 weeks of evolocumab, AMG 145, one of the PCSK9 inhibitors. We have Dr. Michael Korn, who is an MD investigator for the Osler and the Descartes studies and chief executive officer of the Jacksonville Center for Clinical Research in Florida. Thank you very much. First off, tell me about this particular trial, which is coming out of the Proficio Comprehensive Clinical First Trial all, thanks Series. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to talk about these really exciting data. So there were two trials that we did as part of the Proficio program, as you point out. One was called the Osler Study, and the other one was the Descartes Study. The Osler Study was actually an open-label extension of a series of Phase two studies. So after folks finished their phase two participation, they could participate in Osler, which was an open label study. And we took a look at the data after 52 weeks. The Descartes study was a blind, a double blind study, where we looked at a series of patients who got optimized lipid therapy and then were randomized to either evolocumab, 420 milligrams monthly, or control. So what we did is we put these two studies together because they both used the same dose of evolocumab of 420 milligrams, and they both went on for 52 weeks. They're both randomized studies, and they both had a randomization scheme of two to one. Two patients were on evolocumab for every patient on either control or the usual care in the case of Osler. So we put these pa uh, papers together and the data together, and we were particularly interested to see the safety of getting folks to very low levels of LDL cholesterol. So the PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies, particularly in addition to statins, but also on their own, get people to very low levels of LDL. And there's some concern out there amongst clinicians as to whether or not that's safe. Right. And I'm sure you've heard those discussions. Absolutely. So, what we, so the, the bottom line of the paper is that it was a remarkably boring paper, wonderfully boring paper. <laughs> <laughs> and we found no trends in people that were brought down to very low levels of LDL cholesterol. So give you a few more details. It was about 2,200 patients totally studied, two to one randomization scheme of evolocumab versus control or standard of care. And of the patients that were treated with evolocumab, approximately 44% got LDLs below 25 milligrams per deciliter at some point during the study. And 68.5% of patients got below 40 milligrams per deciliter at some point during the study. So these are levels we've never seen before. We've never had clinical trials that got people down to these levels. So what happens? Well, the good news is that not a whole lot happens. There's, there's, no, there's no signal. We're not seeing any difference between these very low LDL patients and patients that were treated to higher levels, above 40 milligrams per deciliter. And concerns about uh, muscle aches or neurocognitive stuff at this level, again, 2,200 patients total, is not coming out as an issue. So that was very pleasing. Now, where does this fit in? Because in this meeting, there have been some interesting and exciting lipid studies. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. Sure, when, sure. You, when you look around at these other studies, where does this all fit in? Sure. Well, I, I was involved in the Improve, it, the Improve It study as an investigator, and that has energized us. That's, it's really energized the LDL hypothesis, because obviously right. there's some questions uh, surrounding it. And the fact is that when you use azetamibe on top of a statin, we're getting LDLs now in the 50s and that looks to be safe and effective, and we have some outcomes to back that up. So the next step is, well, what happens when we go from 50s down to below 40? And so far, so good. So we're seeing that, we're not seeing any safety signals, and, there, and it wasn't an outcome study, so I don't, don't wanna oversell this, but we're actually seeing fewer cardiovascular events in the people that have very low LDLs as compared to people treated to somewhat higher LDLs. And again, I won't say a whole bunch about that because it really wasn't set up to look at that. But no negative signals of any no, kind? None, none at all. Were you relieved when you saw this? Because you oh, had to think that oh, there's, no, you know, there's always the possibility. We keep, you know, we've been hearing about PCSK9s for a couple of years now, and you keep thinking that there may be a shoe that's going to drop one of these days. But so far, so good. It's, it's, really, it's a remarkably safe and clean class of therapeutics so far. So that, that's really quite exciting. So do you think it may be time to relook at uh, some of the guidelines already? I mean, we're only about a year out, but uh, it may not be too soon to start thinking about it. My only comment on that is that guidelines should reflect the clinical trial data. And as these clinical trials come out, the guidelines should change. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Uh, with Dr. Korn here, we have a variety of other stories in CardioSource World News. Please check those out for our December issue. For CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.